One feature of Inkscape that I've known about for a while but have never really played around with until recently is Symbol Libraries. Symbol Libraries are sets of predefined SVG elements that we can use in our designs. And we can also create our own Symbol Libraries as we'll see later. Alright, so to access the Symbol Libraries, we use the Symbols dialog, which we can open by going up to the Object menu and choosing Symbols. By default, it shows us all of the symbols in our current document. Since we haven't added or created any symbols yet, it says no symbols found. To add a symbol, we first choose a symbol library, which we can find in this drop down menu here. We can choose from things like word balloons, flowchart shapes, and a bunch of different map symbols and icons. If we want to just check out all of the symbols, we can choose all symbol sets here. And now we can see all of the available symbols that we can use in our designs. To add a symbol to our current document, we simply drag and drop it onto the canvas. And we can resize them if we want. For some of the symbols, we're able to change the color. For other symbols, however, we can't change the color. For example, if I go up here and search for cashier and add this symbol to the document, I can't change this one's color. Also, and this applies for all of the symbols, if I grab the node tool, it doesn't give me access to the symbol's nodes. The reason for this is that a symbol is basically a clone of the original design that was used to create the symbol. If we want full control over the appearance of the symbol, we first need to unlink it from the original design. To do this, we go up to the Edit menu, then down to Clone, and choose Unlink Clone. And now using the Node tool, we can edit the individual objects that make up the symbol. If we want to create our own symbol, we first need to create an object. Now if we have the object set to a specific color, we won't be able to change the color after turning it into a symbol, as we saw with the cashier symbol. If we want to be able to change the color of this symbol, we first need to unset the object's color. To do this, we can come down here and right-click the object's fill color, then choose Unset Fill. We can do this for the stroke color as well. Alright, now with the object selected, and with the current document chosen in the Symbols dialog, we can click the plus button here at the bottom to create a symbol. We can add this symbol to the canvas. And because we unset the original object's colors, we can change the symbol's colors. We can also create a symbol out of a group of objects. For example, I can select these two objects here that make up a house, group them together, then create a symbol out of it. And we can actually delete the original objects if we want. Now whenever we turn an object into a symbol, it uses the object's ID as the name of the symbol. If we want to use custom names, we need to change the IDs of the objects before turning them into symbols. So first, I'm going to delete all of these objects. Then I'm going to remove the symbols by selecting each one in the list and clicking the minus button at the bottom. And this actually gives us back the original objects, which is pretty convenient. So now we can change their IDs. To do so, we can right-click one of the objects and choose Object Properties, which opens up the Object Properties dialog. And in here we can change the ID, then press Enter. And we can do the same for the group. Alright, now if we create symbols out of these again, it will use the new IDs. Alright, now let's say we want to create our own symbol library with our new symbols so that we can use them in other documents. To do this, we first need to save our current document. And all we need inside the document is the symbols, so we can delete these objects here. Alright, now let's go to File, Save As. It doesn't matter where we save it, as long as we remember the location. And the name that we choose for the file will also be used as the name of the symbol library. I'll just go with My Symbols and click Save. Next, we need to take the SVG file that we just now created and move it into Inkscape's User Symbols directory. To find the location of the User Symbols directory, we can open up the Preferences dialog, 
choose system. And now we should see user symbols here along with the directory location. If we click the open button here, it will open up the folder. And now we can also open up the folder where we saved our document. Then we can drag the SVG file into the symbols folder. All right, now if we start up a new Inkscape document and open the symbols dialog, we should see our new symbol library in the drop down menu. And if we click on it, we should see all of our symbols. Okay, so that's how we can work with symbols in Inkscape. Thanks for watching.